Hi, I'm Joni, creator and road guide here at The Galavan. Before we get to the video, I'd like to invite nomadic women, whether you're full-time, part-time, or still dreaming, to join in on my new Nomadic Women's Virtual Happy Hour, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific, organized through the Gal Adventurers group on Facebook. You can find the link in the description below. The Happy Hour is a place for women to build community, ask questions, share experiences, and dive into the topic of the day. I do hope you'll join us. Now on to the video. This video is a van tour along with great information about different ways to make money on the road and advice for getting started. Kathy is the host of the Solo Women RV podcast and I encourage you to check it out. You'll find the interview she did with me on episode 58. Kathy found a rare rear entry class B van that works for her and her priorities on the road and she was kind enough to let me tour it. This van features a full wet bath in the back, a small galley kitchen, a permanent bed, and a side dinette so that she can have sleeping space and workspace without converting between the two. I'm Kathy Belge and I'm a writer and a podcast host. My blog and podcast are the Solo Women RV podcast. And so my purpose is to encourage women to get out and live the lives of their dreams. And so this is my van. Uh, it is a 2000 American Cruiser built on a 99 Dodge. It's a class B. Um, it's unique because of the rear door entry. And I think they only made this particular model for two years. That's what I've been told anyway. I haven't confirmed that, but from my American Cruiser Facebook group, that's what I've been told. And so you don't see a lot of these out on the road. Whenever I see one, it's always exciting. <laughs> Come on in, I'll show you around. Uh, so this is a class B and I wanted a class B as opposed to a self build out just because I wanted some of the amenities that come with a class B. I'm not super handy. I didn't want to build anything out myself. So that's kind of what I was looking for to get on the road. This is my first rig. So I love it has a full kitchen. It's got a two burner stove. I've got a nice fridge here a microwave that I hardly ever use. Um, sink. I have 30 gallons of water under here for um you know drinking and whatever so one of the things that is weird about this rv is that it, the black and the gray is one tank so that does limit you a little bit in in getting off grid for a long time but there's ways around that to capture your gray water and stuff with a with a bucket so and one of the th reasons why i love the rear entry and the layout of this van is because i can have my bed and my dinette both up and I use both, I use the couch. I'm a writer, so I love having my dinette where I can just sit with my with my laptop and work here. So that's one of the main features of this layout that I, why I really liked this van. It has quite a large bathroom for a class B. And um, for me, um, the person I bought it from loved it because they loved to shower and whatnot. I, I did shower a lot in here during COVID, but I don't shower now that much. But the feature that I love, it's got it's got a great little spot in here where I can tuck my folding mic. Fits in there perfectly. And um, I can throw some other stuff in here to store. But it's a nice size bathroom. And I did want a full bath uh, uh, feature. It is a wet bath, but I wanted a bath when I originally bought this RV. Now I'm thinking maybe that's not so important to me, but at the time it was. Mm -hmm. uh, the other thing that this van also for the size has quite a bit of storage. It's a 20 foot van, but I've got all these cupboards up here for my clothing. This side is where I keep my dishes and my food and the cat treats. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. 
I also got quite a bit of storage under here. I keep down here, I keep my um, folding kayak and um, all of my podcast equipment is under there. And then that, and then also under there's an out, there's an outside access where I can get to like the hoses and the electrical hookup and all that kind of stuff on the outside. Um, I have not upgraded the curtains. That's on my list. These are the original curtains, but um, definitely want to upgrade those and, and get them a little bit prettier. Just, it's, I'm not super handy. So I've been <laughs> trying to find somebody to help me do that. The back cushions come off. It becomes almost like a single bed um, or it can, and this becomes a bed as well. So if I have company, they can sleep here or we can make it into one big, large bed. I used to travel with an 80 pound Alaskan Malamute, but now I've downsized to, to an adventure kitty. This is, this is Tucker and I've had her about, she's just about a year old. So she's been traveling with me um, since last July. So a lot of people ask me about traveling with a cat and um, how I trained her to use a harness. I did pick her up at nine weeks old and the first thing I did was put her in harness. I picked her up in the van, put her in the van. And um, so right now um, there's other harnesses that she's gotten out of. This one she's gotten out of a couple times, but not too often. I have a leash that I walk her on or um, I just use like a regular dog, small dog tie out and she wanders around outside. And then I also have a little backpack for her. So this is her little safe space whenever she wants to, you know, have like her little hideout. This is her little hideout. And I also can take her hiking. She doesn't like to go on too long hikes. She's not like a dog. She doesn't like to hike. She likes to walk around and I get to follow her as opposed to her coming on a hike. Um, and then she'll hang out in this backpack maybe like 30 minutes of a, at a time before she start get, gets getting really antsy on a hike. Um, she's usually happier to stay at home. But when things start to stress her out, this is where she goes. This is her little safe spot. And I keep it on the driver's seat when we're parked or I leave it right here when, uh, when we're driving. Does she travel in it when you're driving or? She's loose when I drive. Mm -hmm. um, she will climb in there sometimes to sleep. Uh, but actually, honestly, um, she rides a lot right here on my on the back of my shoulders, sitting up here. Yeah. And you can see she's purring right now. This is her little happy spot. So, but yeah, uh, traveling with a cat has been actually so much easier than traveling with a dog. I can leave her for longer periods of time. Um, and, and, you know, I, I do have, oh, one of the things I do have is, um, for traveling with a cat is this waggle. It's a pet uh, monitor. It, it monitors the temperature inside the van and sends me alerts if it gets too hot. Um, and one of the, I mean, I can leave it a little bit hotter with a cat than you can for a dog. So, um, but this is essential, I think, for anyone, something similar to this for anyone traveling with a pet so that you can be aware of what the temperature is inside your van when, when you're, uh, when you're traveling. I mean, there's other brands. This is just the one that I happen to have. So traveling with a cat, I had to figure out where to put the litter box. I know a lot of people make things like underneath, but I just decided since I travel solo, just to put it underneath the front seat. That gives me easy access to scoop it out when it's, when I need, when it's time to do that and to clean it and whatnot. Um, and so that works well. Uh, and there's this, this, there's a ton of storage, as I mentioned. Um, up above the cab, there's where I keep all my books and computers and whatnot. Up here is my bedding and toiletries, some more book processing stuff. And then in here, I just got a Wii Boost installed. Um, and I'm finding that's helping me out to get connected in places like this out here, uh, whereas I wasn't able to get connected before. It does have um, a generator, so I can use that the only times I ever really need to use a generator is for the microwave or the air conditioner. Another unique thing about this RV is that it has a house air conditioner. So it runs off a 20 amp. You don't need a 30 amp. Um, it also will run off the generator. 
I have a huge closet also where I get store all my clothes um, and my hiking gear is all in here. Nice. I do stay a lot of times in campgrounds or, you know, 50% of the time probably in campgrounds because I like to take advantage of the power hookups since I don't have a really strong solar system yet. Uh, but what I do have is I have a small Jackery. Actually, it's the smallest Jackery that they make. I think it's a 160. Um, and I can charge my phones and my watch with that, um, my little um, MiFi devices, and I can get maybe one to, or probably two charges of my laptop out of that before it needs to be recharged. And I have two little solar panels that I use the, the Jackery at. And I think at, um, what I would like to do eventually is upgrade probably to the 500 so that I can charge my laptop a few more times on the days when we're not getting sun. So I bought this rig in 2018 and traveled around like a month or so at a time. I was still working my full-time job. And that, uh, but after traveling around a little bit, I quit my job in 2020. Um, I'm not 100% full-time, but I'm about 60 to 80% full-time, depending on the year. I do own a house still and uh, rent that out. And you, actually some of that income helps me to stay on the road longer. Mm -hmm. I actually use a, a website called Furnish Finders and it caters to traveling medical professionals. So I rent from like usually three to six months at a time. Uh, and so right now I have a six month uh, tenant in there. Um, last year I had two three month tenants. So it just depends on what people's schedules are for traveling. And that works out really well for me because I don't, it's not like an Airbnb where you have to turn it over all the time, um, but y it's not a full-time rental. So I can go back to my home when I want to do that. Mm -hmm. um, and also I, I travel, one of the things I do to make a living on the road is I sell um, books on Amazon. And so my front seat becomes a place where I store the books that I'm getting ready to ship out. So I'm a writer, I'm a freelance writer. I've written two books. I was a professional writer for 10 years. And um, when I decided to hit the road, I decided like everybody does, I think to start a blog. And um, I named my van Squeaky. Uh, it's, it's an older van, it has a lot of noises and creaks. And so Squeaky was the name I came up with. So originally I called my blog Travels with Squeaky because it was kind of about my journey. Um, but then uh, at some point I decided I wanted to focus more on um, all the things that I was kind of looking for when I was getting started as a solo women, woman. Um, I noticed there's a lot of solo woman um, YouTube channels, but I didn't hear a lot of podcasts. And I, I'm more of a podcast person. I like to listen when I'm driving. And so it just one day just kind of occurred to me, hey, you can do it, you know? Um, so every year I do like to, um, challenge myself to learn something new. And I decided in, uh, I guess it was 20, 2021 that I was going to teach myself how to podcast and, um, learned how, and just kind of decided, you know, I was going to do it, whether it was perfect or not. I started out calling it travels with squeaky, a podcast for solo women, but then eventually I decided I wanted it to be a little more searchable and findable. So I changed it to the Solo Women RV podcast. And um, what I do is I uh, interview women who are out on the road solo, whether, um, you know, whether they're camping, whether they're RVing, whether in their van full time, um, people who just go out. Like I interviewed one woman who went on her, like after she went on her very first solo camping trip. So it's basically to share stories and inspire women. And also then I also have people come out and talk about um, different topics that women are interested in. I recently did one on, you know, hiking safety. Um, I had a woman who is, uh, uh, she does uh, forest therapy. So talking about the healing benefits of the forest. Um, we also taught, you know, towing safety, the, the, all the kinds of things that people are concerned about. Um, before they get started RVing, I'm in a lot of the 
groups on Facebook. And so I kind of pay attention to what people are asking questions about a lot and try to find experts to speak on those topics. So I've been doing the podcast. I just had my year anniversary of doing the podcast. I love doing it. It's a lot of fun. And I would eventually like to try to monetize it. I haven't done that yet, but um, that's my goal for coming up for 2023, definitely to try to get some sponsors and um, build my audience a little bit more and, uh, uh, and, and see if I can make it a more of a thing that brings me income because I just love doing it. And it does take a lot of time, you know, to line up the interviews, conduct the interviews, do the research and then the editing and everything afterwards. So, um, yeah, so that's the podcast and, and the blog. And so the blog, um, has a little bit, some of the same information, like the stories and stuff aren't on the blog but um, some of the information is the same information and then other different kinds of information is also on the blog um, and that's I've been basing that more on the kinds of things that I notice solo women are searching for when they're looking for information about getting it's and I feel like it's primarily geared towards people just getting started newer people um, because that was what I was looking for when I was getting started but I definitely feel like the stories, anyone can relate to them. I, you know, I talked to, I interviewed somebody, you know, at her seven, after seven years on the road, you know, her story. So, um, and then I also talked to people who are just getting started. I, I like, I want it to, I think my primary audience is people getting started, but I want it to appeal to anyone who's just interested in the topic. Mm -hmm. Say is just start out on whatever your comfort zone is. You know, if you, if your comfort zone is to rent an RV and take it to a local state park 30 miles from your house, like do that. I, I, I just want people to take like whatever their next step is to get ready or, or like, you know, borrow a tent from a friend and, and, you know, just go off to a, a local campground or, um, go backpacking, whatever it is. Um, just take. I think sometimes people get intimidated that, oh, I need to learn how to tow a big 30 foot um, Airstream. If somebody was sitting at home, like thinking about this and wanting to do this, my advice is, is, is do it. Like I said, you don't have to, you don't have to quit your job and go all in. You can go out on weekends, go out when you have free time, take your vacations, do it in a way that it, that works for you now and 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 work up to it that's what i do i'm not i'm not 100 full-time on the road but i have just been trying to make my life work around so that i can be out here as much as i want to be i really appreciate kathy sharing her unusual rv with us she certainly found a good one how Kathy is making money on the road is very typical of lots of nomads, renting out her home, selling things online, and creating content. So I hope you found that useful. Be, for, be sure to check out her podcast at the link below. If you liked this video, please share it. And if you'd like to see more van and rig tours, van life tips, and other information to help women get on the road, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. I appreciate your thoughtful comments, and if you're a woman who would like to dive deeper into conversation, join our Facebook group, Gal Adventurers, and join our Nomadic Women's Virtual Happy Hour, Thursdays at 5 p.m. Pacific. This is Joni with the Galavan. Enjoy your journey. <laughs>